yeah so what we are discussing is we are discussing finite state machines so what are these machines i will start with one example for example you have sentences like i am studying i was studying i is studying you know that some sentences are correct while some sentences are not acceptable so can we have a machine or a, a system which can accept a sentence as an input and give true or false as the output and the true or false is like if sentence is valid sentence in the language then you say it is true or accepted and if it is not valid sentence it will say false or not accepted now let me turn off my video okay so now uh, okay this this particular system is uh, is lit, uh, can be achieved if you if we simply maintain a database of all the possible sentences which are possible but as you know it's it will be very massive very large database and uh, moreover the matching will be so difficult like if i have to match one sentence with uh, every sentence in the um in the um uh, database this it it will be really difficult to find that sentence it in the database because database is so huge so what we do is we use a simplified structure called finite state automaton uh, it is a singular a, in singular in singular tense it is finite state automaton and if it and if it is plural it becomes finite state automata so you replace this with an a automata is for plural okay now what it is so uh it so it is something like this so you have got uh what is it called you have got a yeah i was studying so you can say uh this is some state so whenever you have a, a initial state you draw a dark circle and whenever you have a normal circle this is a uh, a state whenever you have a dark circle it is initial state and whenever you have a double circle it is the final state okay this is just a what is happening why it is this so final state so this is a just a convention for representing uh different things in the fsa so what i am i can do is okay i'm starting with what is happening i'm starting with some initial state i will say i will say that yeah you are seeing a uh, oh, oh. i don't know why this is happening okay i say i and then i move to this particular state and then i say i am and you see move to this particular state and when you say eating you move to this particular state and you will say my sentence is complete okay now uh, i can also say i was eating i can also say i will be eating right so all these possibilities are there and they are all represented by this finite state automaton this is a finite state automaton now anything which is not there here it won't be accepted let's say when i say i uh i is eating then this uh fsa will not accept that particular sentence right and okay now some particular points i can mention here what is happening so i want to mention that um here i is eating is not accepted 
right? It is not accepted. Now I have a question. If I just say I am, is it accepted or not accepted? Are you there? Uh, can somebody not, answer? Not, not accepted. Yes. In this now. Yeah, it is also not accepted because because this is not a final state. So let me number them. I will call this as zero, one, two, three. So because two is not a final state. And it's not working very well today. Okay, it's not a final state. That's it. Now, uh, so that's that's the meaning of a finite state automata. Now, um, I. Um, Okay, let us do some exercises. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, if we say I was running, then will it be accepted or not? Yeah, this automata will not accept. This automata will not accept. But I can create a new automaton which can accept it. Let's say I am saying if I say I Let's say zero state, one state, two state. I am eating. I want to accept I am running. I will just say, okay, add a, a different uh, arc here. It's called an arc or a transition thing. I am running. Now this FSA will accept I am running. Or if I have to say now, we are eating. We are eating, we are running. So uh, how many of you agree that this automaton is a valid automaton, is, is a good auto automaton to represent English language? Sir, we am. Yes, very good. So this automaton will also accept we am eating, which is not a valid sentence. Can you do something to make it proper? What can you do to make this automaton a good one or a valid one? Or maybe to make it more complicated, I will say was or will be. Will be. Now tell me, how do you modify this automaton so that it is a correct automaton? for English language. Pardon? Two parallel automatons. Two parallel automatons. One is through I am will be there and uh, am and will be can be together. And uh, also for V, R is there and will be there. Uh, I'm trying to copy it so that we can I can do what you are suggesting. Okay, I will simply take an eraser and I will say, okay, I don't want like this. Okay, instead, I would like this to map to a new state. Let's call it as four. And this can be modified like this. Right? So we are running. This is R here. This is V here. We are running. We are eating. I am eating. I will be eating. But you are saying we will be eating is also a valid. Yes. So just add, add here. It's happening. 
pen pen is not selected this is the will be right so this is how i will modify this automaton to represent uh, correct english sentences is this concept clear is this concept clear to all of you yes yes sir okay oh, what's happening i think my pen has gone mad <laughs> so okay let us go to the next concept which is a finite state transducer now the transducer many times we don't simply want to accept a sentence but we want to convert a sentence from one form to another form let us say i am seeing a uh, um an example could be i am seeing um uh, numeric numbers to uh, digits let us say when i say 1 um it should convert to o n e 1 when i say 2 it should convert to 2 right this kind of a thing so i don't don't only want, don't only want an input to be accepted but input to be converted into something else like transduced transducer means transduction means one form is converted into another form like you are uh, electric energy getting converted into mechanical energy so you use your motor which is a transducer actually right it converts one thing into another thing so transducer okay so now what is a transducer oh, okay let me add some more examples here okay let us first do this so we have a state dark one for initial state and then if i'm getting an input one uh it will return o n e so now this is the input this is the output right so it has some uh some function fs like written by fs t some input and some output one is the input o n e is the output right and if and then i reach my final state similarly here if 2 is the input 2 is the output two is the output and i reach my uh final state right can you tell me some application of fst can you think of some application of fst yes ha ha speech to text converter speech to text converter or text to speech converter both are good examples yeah yeah thank you so let us say i want to convert my audio time series or audio input into text output then i can use this or i want to convert my text input into uh, some form which which can be given to a phoneme to audio converter like let's say i want to convert my input word let's say one this is a single word i want to convert it into sequence of phonemes one two i want to convert it two right like, so i want to convert my uh, single word to sequence of phonemes then i can use this or i i want to convert phoneme sequence of phonemes into words again i can use this right so this is an example uh it can be used for uh automatic uh, speech recognition or uh, text to speech conversion like right? uh text to speech is tts so so okay now let us expand it a bit you can also have 10 you can also have 11 you can also have 20 you can also have 
how do you handle these with an fsd so okay let us construct the initial state then if i am seeing a one my output is one and i stop here if i see a two my output is a two and i stop here now if i see one one then i can create another right i can go to this one also but anyways i will this finite state is drawn differently you can also merge these two no problem but um and if i see two uh, i can say here 20 and then if i see a zero i will say nothing i will end here but if i see i'm sorry after this if i see a one i will say 21 now end here right this is a good looking fst right yes is this clear sir yeah i can also have 10 sir. if i see a zero after one i will say 10 yeah sir how will we know if there will be any state after the current state for example like i could say one and stop yeah but uh, i could also say one and then say one again which will be 11 yes good question so this is the problem with this kind of representation that when i see one so okay so good point uh this is non it's called non deterministic this is non deterministic automaton or transducer why it is non deterministic because you don't so basically because you have to uh, go through or you have to go down multiple paths when you see an input so you have to go down multiple paths because you have to go down multiple paths whenever i see one i have to from here this state i will go to this state and parallelly i am also going to this state let me number them 0 1 2 3 4 5 so whenever i see a one i will be reaching the state one and also state two and if my if i don't see any further input then of course uh, this will be rejected and only this will be accepted and your output will be one but if i see another input after that one then i will reject this one because there is no path uh, going further so this this root is rejected this path is rejected but only this token is accepted and this token moves to the next state and uh, so you will be let's say you see one zero then you will say 10 and then you will stop here and if there is another input which is let's say again a zero then this automaton is not accepting this this automaton will simply return false or this transducer will return false I mean it will say i don't know what you are inputting right so this is an non deterministic fst but we can convert it into a deterministic fst how
deterministic FST. How? Simply say, okay, I'm starting with my initial state. And if I see a one, I will, what will I output? I will not output anything. I will just postpone. Right? And if I see nothing, then I will output a one. And I will end here. And if I see after this a zero, then I will output a 10. And I will end here. And if I see a one, again, I will say it's an 11. Right? So in this way, I have converted my uh, non-deterministic FST into a deterministic FST. Now you have to go, means you have to trace only single path. There are not multiple paths to trace. Whenever you see a one, then there is only one transition or only one arch which can be taken, not multiple arches. And similarly, you can do fit two also in the same way. And you see two, you output nothing, but you come to this, that is a zero, one, two, but you've come to state three. And then you saw nothing, you will say my output is two. And then if you saw zero, you will say my output is 20. And then you, if you see one, you will say my output is 21. Okay, uh, so see this 20 and this one are already some symbols in the output dictionary. So instead of creating 21 as a new symbol, I can just use the existing symbols. So what I will say is, it goes to another state, state four, and the input is nothing and output is one, 21. Right, so all these things are possible. Basically you can see that the things are becoming very messy. That is why we make use of a library to take care of this. A library which can have, means you can write a library on your own, but there are existing libraries also, which can first of all, see this one, uh, deterministic FST, uh, non-deterministic FST, it is very easy to construct, but uh, during decoding time or during when you actually run it for matching a string or converting a string, that time it is difficult that you have to track multiple paths, right? So it's easy to construct, but difficult to infer or dif difficult to uh, use. On the other hand, this is difficult to construct, but very easy to use. So there is a library which you can use or you can construct a library to uh, that you construct this form and then you simply uh, use a function to convert it into this form and then use this form for your task. Right? So that uh, library, one such library is OpenFST, which we will be looking at. And uh, Cardi also uses that library. So I think it's, a, it's an interesting library. Now, uh, some points which I want to mention. One point is that these states are also meaningful, right? If I'm sitting at state two, then this means that I have already seen a one as input. If I'm sitting at state four, it means that I have already seen two as input and I have already returned 20 as output. And if I'm sitting at five, it means I have already seen uh, either 20, uh, two zero or two one as input and I have returned either 20 as output or 21 as output. So every state is carrying some meaning. So, okay. So this is how uh, my FST is. Now, I think I can quickly open my uh, terminal and discuss FSTs with you. Let me just do it. I will share my screen again. I want to do a demo of FST. Stop share. Okay.
Okay, so the library which I'm using is OpenFST. It is available free of cost online. It's open source library, OpenFST. And uh, let me share my screen. Where is OpenFST? See, this is the OpenFST library. Um, can go to home. OpenFSD.org. So this is how you install it. Uh, conda install minus the conda forge OpenFSD. It will install the library in your machine and then you can start using it. Uh, so some background material, which might be useful for you that this is the basic paper. These two papers are generally uh, used to uh, you if you want to understand the details of this library and you want to see how asr is using these libraries so this is the uh, relevant uh, th these two are relevant papers and uh, yeah then there are some tutorials etc which you can see um, yeah and anyway so let's go back and let's come to a quick tour this is very useful in the quick tour, you can find some ways to use this library. So this libraries can be this library can be used either from C++ or from your shell script. I will be discussing now the shell script based implementation of it. I will not be discussing uh, what do you say the um, C++ based implementation. Although both are very simple, you can. Uh, because uh, what is it called? The Kaldi is using shell script based implementation. So I'm discussing shell script based implementation so that you can quickly uh, use it for your project as well. Okay, now let me. Uh, okay, let me. What do I do? I have to. Let me. Share the entire screen with you. Okay, so this is the entire screen, and I have to first show you the folder where I'm storing everything. Okay, so I have created this folder called, uh, okay, I've created this file called 01 underscore fsd.sh, and if I open it, this is the file I will discuss uh, slowly with you. And let me so. It's a shell script. That's why I write fs uh, dot sh here, right? So what I will be doing is, uh, okay. okay, let me just use this one. Okay, first of all, I will install my, uh, I just quickly made this uh, file. It, it, will, um, it just took me about how much, maybe, uh, 10 minutes to complete the whole thing. So basically, uh, whenever I'm doing stuff, I, I want to save my files, etc. In, in a temporary folder. So I will not be uh, so that I, uh, it's easy to clean up. So first of all, I will delete all my temporary folder. So okay, let us start with a fresh So First thing is I want to create an FST. Uh, let us draw it first. Uh, let us say I want to draw this FST. Mm, take a simple one. Yeah, this I am eating. Or, or else let us let us draw this one, but we will not draw everything, but just maybe only one, one, two, uh, one, one, ten, eleven, etc. Only this, uh, sorry, this part above this line. 
Okay, so how do I do it? So what I will do is I will say, okay, first I will make a temporary folder, make directory. So why why do I use minus p? Minus p is just for permissions that if this folder is already existing, then don't throw an error, but simply use the existing folder only. Then I want to create uh, an FST. So okay, let us modify this. I'll say uh, my state, these are the state numbers. So the format is like this. And uh, I do it? Yeah, the format is like this. I have to give Oh. Okay, so cat command is simply uh, if I say cat uh, zero one fst dot s, it will simply print whatever is there in this file. It will simply print on the screen. Okay, so it simply prints the whole thing on the screen. So what I will be doing is I will be doing cat. And I want to write in a file. This file is text.fst, right? I'm I'm going to write uh, my the what I want in in text.fst, and so the format is like this: source. You can see source zero one two three four. These are the uh, source node, destination node, input label, output label, and weights. We have not discussed weights yet. So I will be not using weights. Uh, we have we have discussed only finite state transducers. Weights are used for weighted finite state transducers, which I'll be discussing maybe in the next class. But for now, just discuss this much. So okay. So my state zero to state one, input is one, and the output is O N E one. Right. My state. Zero to state one, input is two, output is T W O two. Then one is the final state, and uh, okay. if one is my final state, I will say one like this. Then uh, it goes from zero to two. Right, so initial so source and destination zero to two, and what is the input? Input is one, output is blank. I think they are they use EPS for blank. I let us check. Okay, and then the input is uh, sorry, initial state is two, two three, two three. Input is zero, and output is ten, and Two to three, input is one, output is eleven, and my three is a final state. That's it. So I have written this. I will be running this command on my uh, terminal. So what it will do is it will. Uh, okay, I think I did not. I did not create a folder. Did I create? Yeah, temp is there. Okay, I have created a folder temp already. Okay, so and now this text.fst, it simply I have to open it with okay, I think text. So you see everything is just written down here, right? So this is good. I can also say here. Cat temp uh, text dot fst. It will just print whatever is there in this file, and this is there. So so okay. So maybe I will just explain this command. This command, what it does is cat, and then uh, this this double arrow towards left. It says that this is the input. You see that uh, this uh, double left arrows will are saying this is the input to this command to this command and what is the output whatever is the output you write it down to text.fst so basically it is writing this text into this file that is the 
function of cat command. So instead of printing on the screen, you uh, channel the output into this file. That is how it is doing. Okay, now this is created. I will just comment this out because I don't want to confuse it. Okay, now I have, now how an FST stores things, it also needs uh, what are my input symbols and what are my output symbols. So my input symbols are, okay, in this case, let me reconstruct. My input symbols are oh, zero is for epsilon uh, and eps, how I have represented epsilon, EPS. Okay, I can say it like this. So epsilon symbol, so the format is symbol slash uh, The format is symbol space the number. So I will say what are all possible symbols here in, in the input side symbols are one, two, zero, right? These are the possible symbols. Okay. So I will say zero, one, and two. These are the symbols and the corresponding digits are, they should be in order. So zero, one, two, three. I think that's all right. These are my input symbols. Now, what are my output symbols? My output symbols are uh, 1, 2, 10, and 11. 1, 2, 10, and 11. It's it. Right, one, two, ten, and eleven. These are my output symbols, and I have given them some numbers. So okay, let let us also write these files on my bash window or on my terminal. Okay, you can see now uh, ls. Temp. In my time directory, these three files are created text.fst, input symbols, and output symbols.txt. Now I have to compile my uh, FST. I have to compile means I have to construct this whole thing, which can be used by my library later. So I will use FST compile. And the uh, command is uh, I'm mentioning what are my input symbols, what are my output symbols, and then uh, what is my input FST file, which is text.fst, and what is my binary FST file, which is binary.fst, right? I, I'm writing it, I'm compiling the whole thing and writing it to the binary.fst. Now, why do I want to compile it? Because it can be easily used by my program. So I just use this. Uh, I did some mistake somewhere. EPS, EPS. Oh, because I modified this, but I didn't run it again. So I have to run it. Yeah, okay. So now let's do it. It compiles very well. Now, how do I see whether I constructed this graph properly or not? So what I will do is I will be printing my FST on screen. What happened? Mm -hmm. I did a mistake. Uh, basically, this function uh, converts my binary FST into a textual FST. Uh, it was overwriting the earlier text.fst. So, okay, I've, I've changed it to text1.fst. Now I can say cat temp text one dot fst it simply prints uh, the basically it's a converter so the first thing converts the com fst compile converts my text file into the binary file and fst print 
converts my binary file into the text file. Okay, now I want to see a pictorial representation. So I will say FST draw. This will draw the whole thing, but it will draw in the dot format. So if I again say LS temp dot format is drawn, but I uh, dot format I want to see. So I will convert this dot format into a, a PS format or a, a PDF format. And now I can see it in the folder, the PDF, the PS file is created. I can open it, the postscript file, and this is how it looks like, right? So I, my initial state is dark black circle. My final states are uh, double rings and my normal states are just normal circles. And input is one, output is one, input is two, output is two. Input is one, output is nothing, input is zero, output is 10, one to 11, yeah. So this is a finite state transducer. Now, uh, see this binary file which I have created, binary.fst. This file can be used by my library and, I, and you can perform various operations on this file. One operation is like converting a non-deterministic FST to a deterministic FST. So this just run a program, run a command and just with one command, it will convert it. Maybe we'll do it in the next class. So for now, I think we can stop here. Okay, any questions we can take in the next class because it's a little late now. I'm sorry for the glitch today because of that we got a little delayed. Yeah, so thank you very much. See you on Wednesday. Yeah.